Thin-walled pressure vessels are often used as examples for finding the principal stresses with the use of methods like Mohr's circle. Since many of the typical structures subjected to combined static loading only result in one normal stress sigma and one shearing stress tau, link below to that combined loading main video and its examples, these pressure vessels are a good opportunity to show how there are indeed structures where two normal stresses, sigma x and sigma y, arise. Because their walls are thin and therefore offer little resistance to bending, we assume that the internal forces exerted on a given portion of the wall are tangent to the vessel. For cylindrical pressure vessels, we refer to the radius R as the inner radius, and lowercase t to the wall thickness. The fluid pressure inside it is just lowercase p, and it refers to the gauge pressure, which is the difference between the absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure outside the tank. The stresses on the surface are labeled sigma 1 and sigma 2, where sigma 1 is the tangential, circumferential, or most commonly, the hoop stress. Sigma 2 is the axial or longitudinal stress. By performing a cut along the z-axis and then taking half of that cut, we see that the pressure is pushing back while the walls are holding the vessel together due to the stresses within the material. The force created by the fluid pressure is P times the inside area and the force created by the stresses is the stress times the cross-section area of the material. In terms of the dimensions we defined, the internal area is 2 times the radius times the length of the cut delta Z and the cross-section area of the material is the thickness T times delta Z times 2, one at the top and one at the bottom. Since the sum of forces in that direction has to be equal to zero, we can solve for sigma 1, the hoop stress, as PR over T. If we now perform only one cut along the z-axis and follow the same analysis of pressure and stress, we would say that the force caused by the fluid pressure is P times the area of a circle of radius R and the force caused by the stress is the stress times the area of a ring. Since the whole premise is that these are thin-walled vessels, meaning that the thickness T is small, the area of the ring will not be the outer circle minus the inner circle, pi times outer radius squared minus inner radius squared, but just the circumference of the inner circle times the thickness T. And again, since the sum of forces is zero, because the vessel is not accelerating, sigma 2 or the longitudinal stress is PR over 2T. Now, if we look at a spherical pressure vessel, we see that the stress element at any location of the surface will be the same. It will be subjected to two tangential orthogonal stresses sigma. By taking a cut that is perpendicular to the stress element, we would effectively be performing a cut where the cross-section is the largest circle possible. The force analysis would be almost identical to what we just did for the longitudinal stress of the cylindrical pressure vessel. We would say that the force caused by the fluid pressure is P times the area of the circle of radius R, and the force caused by the stress is the stress times the area of a ring, where the area of the ring is still the circumference times the thickness T. And this is the same for both sigmas, vertical and horizontal. When we perform a perpendicular cut to the one we just did, we see the exact same terms from pressure, stress, and areas. Therefore, the spherical pressure vessel is subjected to two identical stresses, PR over 2T. Now, if we're looking for the principal stresses to see when these structures will fail, and we'll learn about this comparison between principal stresses and material properties in the failure theories video, linked in the description below, we can use what we learned during the Mohr circle video, also linked below, to find the principal stresses and the maximum shearing stresses for both cylindrical and spherical pressure vessels. For cylindrical pressure vessels, our stress element has two normal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, and no shearing stresses. With the Morse circle expressions we derived in the previous main video, link below, we can find the center of the circle for its radius. Since one of the stresses is twice the value of the other stress, the Morse circle will always look the same. One given stress will be at PR over 2T, the other at twice that value at PR over T, and the center of the circle right at the middle. The radius is of course the distance from the center to either given stress, and therefore the maximum shearing stress has that same value. Now remember that this is the in-plane maximum shearing stress. 
the overall maximum shearing stress is the value of the radius for the circle that encompasses all principal stresses, including that in the third dimension. Of course, the normal stress into or out of the plane stress element is zero, which means that the third principal stress is zero, and therefore the circle that encompasses it all has a radius of half its diameter at p over 2t. The principal stresses would be pr over t, pr over 2t, and zero. If we now look at the Mohr circle for the spherical pressure vessels, we would see that the center of the circle is located exactly at the value for the only two given normal stresses. The radius of the circle is zero, which means that the in-plane Mohr circle is a dot located at pr over 2t. Of course, and once again realizing that the third stress in the third dimension is zero, the encompassing circle would go from zero to pr over 2t. This means that the radius of the circle is pr over 4t, which corresponds to the maximum shearing stress. And this is the overall maximum stress, not the in-plane max shearing stress, which in this case is zero. The principal stresses would be two stresses of pr over 2t and one stress of zero. These expressions will always be the same, but it's almost not worth using them as an equation to just substitute variables in. The Mohr circle process is so simple that it's better to understand what you're finding than memorizing additional expressions to find the results you're looking for. Let's take a look at a simple example where we put into use what we've learned here, and if you want to check more complex examples on this same topic, make sure to check out the example links to those two-minute videos in the description below. A cylindrical gas tank is made of steel and has an outer diameter of 3.3 meters and a wall thickness of 18 millimeters. What are the principal stresses and the overall maximum shearing stress when the pressure inside the tank is 1.5 megapascals? What is the factor of safety if we define it for this example as the ultimate strength over the maximum principal stress? Remember to try this problem on your own before watching the solution to it up next. From the expressions we developed today, we know that we need to calculate the radius r, which like it was pointed out at the beginning of this video, refers to the inner radius, not the outer radius. Since the diameter that we were given is the outer diameter, we'll divide this into two to find the outer radius and subtract one thickness value t. With the pressure, the thickness, and this inner radius, we find the values for the maximum normal and maximum shearing stresses. The factor of safety would therefore be 400 over 136. And remember from the Mohr circle we drew before that the second principal stress has the same value as the overall maximum shearing stress. For more complex examples on pressure vessels and the other 10 minute lecture videos of all the other topics of the Mechanics of Materials course, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.